Now, students, we'll uh, discuss the international section. World's first Hindi-speaking robot, Rashmi. Ranchi-based software developer Ranjit Srivastav is developing the world's first Hindi-speaking humanoid robot called Rashmi. The robot will speak Bhojpuri, Marathi and English and is equipped with facial expressions and recognition systems. So students, this humanoid robot named Rashmi is inspired from Sophia, which became the world's first robot citizen and Rashmi was or the robot Rashmi was developed over the period of two years, right? So now we have the first Hindi speaking robot named Rashmi. Now the next news. Chinese researchers create world's first single chromosome yeast. Researchers from China have claimed to have created the world's first single chromosome yeast while not affecting the majority of its functions. The researchers involved in the creation are molecular biologists from the Center for Excellence in Molecular Plant Sciences in China. The research was published on the website of the journal Nature on August 2, 2018. So students, this particular research, it has shown that the entire genetic information can be concentrated in one single chromosome without affecting majority of its functions. Okay, so this particular research will further help in researches related to the aging problems and other diseases in humans. So this was about the Chinese research. Now let's move on to the next news. Google officially launches Android 9 named Pi. Google announced Pi as a name for the latest version of the Android operating system succeeding Android Oreo. The Android P or Pi version has begun rolling out to Pixel phones and will be available to other devices later this year. So Pi is the latest version of Android smartphone software. It includes various tools and features that will help fight smartphone addiction. So it also has three very important pillars which are intelligence, simplicity and digital well-being. So students, these are the three very important pillars of this new version of Android smartphone software. So this was about Pi. Let's move ahead. Former Chile President Bachelet named new UN Human Rights Chief. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has chosen former two-time Chilean President Michelle Bachelet to be new UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. She would replace Jordan's Zayed Rael Al Hussein, Bachelet, who ranks among the world's most powerful women in politics, also served in 2010 as first director of UN Women. So she has also served as director of UN Women, which is a UN agency promoting gender equality worldwide. So students, the Office of UN High Commissioner for Human Rights is a United Nations agency that works for promoting and protecting the human rights that are guaranteed under the international law. And now we have our new president of this uh, UN High Commissioner for uh, Human Rights. It's Michelle Bachelet. Let's move ahead. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed World Biofuel Day Conference. The World Biofuel Day is observed every year on August 10 to create awareness about the importance of non-fossil fuels as an alternative to conventional fossil fuels. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed a diverse gathering consisting of farmers, scientists, entrepreneurs, students, government officials and legislatures in New Delhi to mark the World Biofuel Day 2018. So students, we have already discussed what biofuel is. It's a fuel that is derived from biomass. And this particular conference, it was held for the purpose of uh, making people aware of the efforts done by the government in the sector of biofuel production. Right? Let's move on to the next news. Now let's begin with the award section. The very first news under the section is Gopal Krishna Gandhi conferred with Rajiv Gandhi Sadbhavna Award 2018. 
the advisory committee of the rajiv gandhi national sadbhavna award has awarded the former west bengal governor gopal krishna gandhi this year with the rajiv gandhi sadbhavna award 2018 he has been chosen by the committee for his outstanding contribution for promoting communal harmony peace and goodwill the award carries a citation and a cash award of rupees 10 lakhs so students this rajiv gandhi sadbhavna award is a national award which is given to the eligible candidates for the contribution that they make towards communal harmony national integration and peace so this year it's gopal krishna gandhi who has been chosen for this award let's see the next award now indian origin mathematician akshay venkatesh wins the prestigious fields medal so let's read the news akshay venkatesh a renowned indian australian mathematician is one of the four winners of mathematics prestigious fields medal known as the nobel prize for math each winner receives a 15000 canadian dollar cash prize The other three winners are Kosha Berker, a Cambridge University professor of Iranian Kurdish origin, Germany's Peter Scholz, who teaches at the University of Bonn, and Alessio Figali, an Italian mathematician at ETH Zurich. So, students, these were the winners of the Field Medal this year, which is given away by the International Mathematical Union to one or more outstanding researchers. for their outstanding discoveries in mathematics let's move ahead now okay students now let's discuss the index section united nations e government index india ranked 96th denmark tops the list india jumped 22 places to 96th rank in the top 100 of the united nations e government development index 2018 Denmark with an index value of 0.915 topped the 2018 e-government development survey. The e-government survey is released by the United Nations in every 2 years. The 2018 edition was titled as Gearing e-government to support transformation towards sustainable and resilient societies. India which was ranked 118 in 2014 jumped 11 places to be ranked 96 in 2018 so students united nation e government index it's a survey which uh, looks into how e government can facilitate integrated policies and services for sustainable development so this year india has been ranked 96th in this survey let's look into the top rankers The first rank as you know goes to Denmark. The second rank goes to Australia. Third goes to Republic of Korea. The fourth rank goes to UK and the fifth rank goes to Sweden so these are the top 5 rankers of united nations e government index let's move ahead india ranked 177 on environmental performance index 2018 according to the world economic forum ranking india has been placed 177th out of 180 countries on the environmental performance index 2018 The Union Environment Ministry has rejected the score by considering it as arbitrary and unscientific. So India is not very happy with the way the ranking has been done. India slipped 36 points for 141 in the 2016 report prepared by Yale and Columbia universities along with the World Economic Forum. So this uh, survey or this index environmental performance index is prepared by Yale and Columbia universities along with World Economic Forum. The World Economic Forum said that India's remark was linked to the poor performance in the environmental health policy and deaths due to the air pollution categories. Mahesh Sharma, Minister of State for Environment, Forest and Climate Change said that the reason for India's decline is because of the change in parameters between two editions of the report. So the union minister has uh, alleged that the ranking is not because of the poor performance of india but because of the change in the way ranking is done the change in the strategy in way the ranking was done by the forum so this is the controversy surrounding this index 
Let's move ahead. Pune ranked first in ease of living index 2018, Delhi at 65th rank. Of total 111 cities ranked under the ease of living index 2018, which was released by Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri, Pune has been ranked first, while Navi Mumbai has surfaced as second preferred spot in terms of livability. Let's have a look at the top five rankers of the ease of living index. The first rank, as you know, goes to Pune. Second rank goes to Navi Mumbai. Third rank goes to Greater Mumbai. Fourth rank goes to Tirupati. And the fifth rank goes to Chandigarh. So these are the top five rankers in the Ease of Living Index, which analyzes 111 cities on the basis of various factors, which shows how comfortable a city is in terms of livability. Let's move ahead. Let's now start with the sports section. Rafael Nadal won Rogers Cup 2018. Rafael Nadal defeated Greek teenager Stefanos Tsitsipas. He clinched his fourth Canadian Masters 1000 title at the Rogers Cup in Toronto. So students, Rogers Cup is an annual tennis tournament which is held in Canada. And this year it's Rafael Nadal that has won the cup. Let's see the next news. Virat Kohli topped International Cricket Council's rankings for test batsmen. Virat Kohli scored 149 and 51 in India's 31 run defeat at Ed Baston and went up by 31 points, which helped him as the top ranked batsman. Indian off spinner Ravi Chandran Ashwin gained 14 points following his 4 for 62 and 3 for 59 in the first test. So, here are some facts regarding the International Cricket Council's rankings for test batsmen, and it's Virat Kohli who has stopped this ranking. Let's see the next news. PV Sindhu won silver medal in World Championship Women's Singles Title Clash. PV Sindhu followed a 1921-1021 loss to Olympic champion Marine of Spain. She won two bronze medals at the 2013 Guangzhou and 2014 Copenhagen editions. In men's singles, it's Kento Momoto of Japan who won the title against Shi Yuki. So students, this is the badminton tournament which is sanctioned by Badminton World Federation and PV Sindhu won the silver medal. The gold medal has been won by Carolina Marine of Spain. She also becomes the first woman who has won this championship thrice. Okay, let's move on to the next news. Let's start now the space section. Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced manned space mission taking Indian astronauts to space on board Gaganyaan by 2022. The Indian Space Research Organization will have two unmanned missions and spacecraft will be launched using GSLV that is Geosynchronous Launch Vehicle Mark 3. So students before the launch of Gaganyaan by 2022 it's planned that two unmanned missions will also be sent. GSLV Mark III launch vehicle will be fully equipped with crew module and life support system for a manned mission in the next two years. If successful, India would be the fourth nation to achieve that feat. Fourth nation, who are the other three nations? It's Russia, US and China. If successful, India would become the fourth nation to achieve this feat. So students, uh, Gaganyaan, a very important mission of ISRO. It's planning to send a three-person crew to space for the period of seven days. So it's slated to be launched by 2022. Let's move ahead now. It's due to launch its heaviest satellite, GSAT-11, on November 30th. Indian Space Research Organization's heaviest satellite so far, the GSAT-11 weighing over 5.7 tons, that is 5,700 kg, which the space agency had cleared for launch in June, will take off a spaceport in French Guiana on 30th November. The GSAT-11 carries 40 transponders in the KU band and KA band frequencies 
and is capable of providing high bandwidth connectivity with up to 14 GB per second data transfer speed. So this is the particular mission of uh, GSAT 11. It will help us in providing high bandwidth connectivity that is up to 14 GB per second data transfer speed. GSAT full form is given here. It's geosynchronous satellite and one more fact who's the ISRO chairman it's K7. So students this is another important mission of ISRO that is launching the, the heaviest satellite so far GSAT 11. It was slated for launch earlier this year but due to a failure that ISRO encountered in another satellite that is GSAT uh, 6A the launch of this satellite was also postponed so that further checks can be done. So now it is slated to be launched on November 30th. Let's move to the next news now. Now we'll start the military exercise section. MET 3 2018 joint military exercise between India and Thailand held in Thailand. Exercise MET 3 is a joint military exercise between Indian Army and the Royal Thai Army and was held in Thailand from 6 to 19th August 2018. MET 3 2018 is a platoon level exercise that comprises of infantry component and what was the aim? To develop mutual understanding in Banhami between the two armies in order to counter terrorism. So it's MET 3 which is a joint military exercise between India and Thailand. It was held from 6 to 19th August 2018. Military exercise is nothing but uh, employment of military resources for the purpose of training for military operations. Right? Let's move ahead. Now let's see the important appointments. Aris Sharma reappointed as TRAI, that is Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, Chairman till September 2020. The government reappointed Ram Sevak Sharma as Chairman of Telecom Regulatory Authority of India till September 2020 when he turned 65. He was named the Tarai Chief in July 2015 for a three-year three period. Sharma, who recently shared his Aadhaar number on Twitter, also served as UIDAI's Director General between 2009 and 2013 and even wrote the first software for UIDAI. Now, UIDAI is the unique identification authority of India. So, Ram Sevak Sharma has also served as Director General of UIDAI. Now, his term has also extended for two years, that is till September 20. 20. Let's see the next appointment. Rika Sharma appointed as chairperson of National Commission for Women. Sharma, 54, was earlier a member of the commission and was holding the additional charge of chairperson after Lalita Kumaramangalam demitted office in September last year. So she belongs to Haryana. The National Commission for Women was set up as a statutory body in January 1992 under the National Commission for Women Act 1990 and the National Commission for Women it's a commission that looks into protecting and promoting women rights and Rekha Sharma has been appointed as the chairperson of National Commission for Women. So students that was all in today's lecture for current affairs covering the month of August 2018. We'll meet next month now. Till then best of luck for your preparation.